Hey everybody, welcome to the Haven Family Farm. My name's Chris, and thank you for joining me for today's video. What we're gonna work on in this video is the one John Deere Gator behind me here. I'll spin you around. This is a John Deere Gator TS 4x2. This is a great little machine for getting around the farm. It has an electric dump box on it for hauling some stuff, going to point A to point B. Now, it is not the fastest, most powerful utility vehicle out there. It is just two-wheel drive. We got big flotation tires on there, but I absolutely love this Gator. It is simple and it gets the job done. It's easy to take care of. Uh, we haven't had to repair anything, but it, it would be easy to repair. This is just a single cylinder air-cooled engine. So there's no cooling system on here, no water pump, radiator, hoses, all of that stuff to deal with. The braking system on this uh, kind of works through the transaxle system. So there's no brake fluid lines, brake fluid reservoir, all of that stuff. Uh, again, single cylinder, there's one spark plug. It is a carburetor, so there's no electronic fuel injection system on it. Just a great, simple, overall machine. So what we've got to do in today's video is some service work. There's a few grease points on it. We're going to change the engine oil and oil filter. We're going to change the fuel filter and just look everything over, make sure it's good to go for the upcoming season. So if you like this kind of content, please hit the subscribe button because there'll be more videos coming up with this Gator. And I think I do our, actually already have a video on the channel from our 825i S4 over there. That is actually in for maintenance. I am not going to record anything on that again because I believe I already have a video on it. So, one of the things with this Gator is uh, it has great stability, you know, wide stance, low to the ground, not going to tip over. But the downside to that is it is a little bit difficult to get under there with a drain pan and to drop the uh, engine oil plug. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to back this up. I took the skid steer out to make some room. I got my little ramps here, my Rhino ramps. We're going to back up. We're going to let this warm engine warm up a little bit before we drop the oil. But I'm going to put the front end up on ramps just to make the process easier. Let's get started. All right, it was a little tight under there, so I cheated. And I've got four ramps under the machine to get it up and level, so it's easier for me to get under. I prefer the ramps over jack stands, that's just me. But now we got plenty of room to work. All right, we're under the belly of the beast here. Our drain plug is, oops, is up here. Probably a wrench would have been, eh, we got it. The hole is a little tight. A wrench would work just fine. Though we have to be careful not to uh, drop this. Hopefully you guys can still see and out she comes. Okay, so here's what the drain plug looks like. It's actually plastic. It gives you two ways, I guess, to take it out. There's kind of an Allen head on there and then of course the outside of it you can put a socket on. But uh, being plastic, we better be careful with it, not to cross thread it or hoss on it too much, but we are ready to put that back up in here. All right, we'll just lightly snug it. Now we're ready to go find the oil filter. All right, so here's the rear engine compartment. I am on the passenger side. I'm gonna show you where this filter is here. You can just see the top of it there. I'm gonna take that off and put the new one on. You, I have no place to put the camera so you guys can see any of that. Just remember to keep your drain pan underneath the gator. There is a slot in the bottom of the frame for the oil to drain down through so you won't make a mess on the floor. All right, we got our new filter going in. You pretty much have to just feel your way around because <laughs> you really can't see down there. So I did my best to clean everything up and uh, now we're ready to put this in. So to make life a little easier, we're gonna take this piece of plastic housing cover off here. I 
All right, so we took some of the bolts out of that cover and that will give us a little better access. Our oil check and fill is right here, which is kind of underneath the edge of the plastic. And then also our fuel filter is way down in that hole. So I was hoping I could get this plastic off to be able to reach that better. So now what we're gonna do is put some oil in. All right, so let's pull our dipstick out of the way here. So the manual says that this takes like 1.3 quarts. See if we can squeeze a funnel in there somehow. So what I'm putting in for oil is AMS oil, ATV, UTV, 10W40. 10W40 is approved in the book. And this is a nice heavy duty synthetic oil formulated for utility vehicles and four wheelers. So let's dump her in here. All right, we've got oil to the full mark on the dipstick. We're gonna fire it up, check for leaks, let it run and fill the uh, filter up, and then we'll check it again. Okay, so our fuel filter is right here. I think you guys can just see it. I have a new one. I was hoping this plastic would get out of the way more than it is, but uh, it doesn't want to. I'll try and change this. I don't think you guys are going to be able to see anything because I think my hands are going to be right in the way. All right, John Deere is going to get an F for the location and placement of this fuel filter. I've had to take off another heat shield, which bought me a tiny bit of room. I got the last clamp back. Oh, there we go. Jeez. This has not been easy at all. You just can't get your hands in here. And this piece of plastic up here will not come off easily. I've fought with that for a little while. All right, it's done. New one is in. That was lots of fun. Good luck if you have gorilla arms. All right, let's go ahead and check our oil. Gator's been sitting a little while. Looks like we're about at the halfway mark. Could probably put just a little bit more in there. All right, let's go ahead and check our air filter here. There's two clips that pop. This is actually easy to get to. Take that guy off. Pop the filter out. Boy, that looks clean. I don't even think we need to blow that out. We're good to go there. So let's check our uh, transaxle oil here. This does not need to be changed yet, but we'll just make sure we're, of course, in the good range. You guys are probably not gonna be able to see that, but it's about three quarters of the way up on the dipstick there. I can just make out where the oil is black was not a good color for that dipstick but we're good to go there okay our battery is under the passenger seat we took a plastic cover off right here we just check our connections here looks pretty good I like to put a little uh, anti-corrosive spray on just to keep things cleaned up so the battery's good. So there's a few grease fittings we're gonna do. 
you can see right here on the axle there's one here there's an axle on the other side over there that we're going to grease up and then on the front there's a grease fitting right in here for the steering and same thing on the other side and that's it So there's one of the grease fittings on one of the axles here, driver's side. Uh, those grease fittings will spin when the axles spin. So if they're not lined up to a position where you can easily get to them, just roll your gator forward or backwards and that'll bring those uh, zerks around to where you can get on them easy. All right, so let's check our spark plug here. We're gonna take it out and just uh, see if we need to clean it. This gator uses the choke quite a bit, so there's a possibility that the plug might be kind of dirty. Yeah, I think we'll go clean that up a little bit. All right, gave her a quick cleaning put this back in for those of you who may not know there are special sockets for spark plugs that makes the job uh, quite easy to take them in and out so you may want to consider getting some or one depending on what you have that has a gas engine in it a lot of the plugs are kind of the same size Snug that back up. I don't know, there is a piece of rubber in there that grabs a hold of the plug. So when you go to pull it out, it comes right with the socket. Makes it super handy. Well, all right guys, that does it. I think we've done everything we need to do. I did uh, lube up the hinge points on the dump box. I checked the tire pressure and the wheel lug. Make sure the wheel lugs were tight. Uh, I did those off camera. Other than that, I think I've showed you everything that uh, we did. So it's all, she's all good to go. The only other little hint that I will give you guys is to make sure you keep a log of what you did and when you did it. Um, in the back of my owner's manual that came with this, there's actually a blank chart that it gives you space to write things down. That's a great place to write them down. You know, normally like on tractors and whatnot, I will actually write the date and the engine hours and all that like on the oil filter. But on this machine, it's buried so deep in there, you'd never be able to see it or read it or whatever anyway. So the owner's manual to me is a great place to uh, do that and store that information so you're good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. Some of my struggles here, but we got it done. She's good to go, ready for the summer. If you have any questions, comments leave them down below i'll do my best to answer the questions i'm not a john deere mechanic but as you saw we did do the service on here so if i can help you i will please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon if you want to see more content like this or tractor repairs uh, tractor maintenance running farm equipment all that stuff you'll see on this channel here so make sure to hit the subscribe and the bell icon i greatly appreciate it and if you wouldn't mind the thumbs up too on your way out the door Thanks everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I sure hope to see y'all in the next video.